Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this awesome looking video capture device. Now this is called Easy Recorder 330 and this is done by a company called Haver Media. And yes, they are phenomenal when it comes to these type of little gadgets. Now I am using mostly the Evermedia capture device from before, but this is another level. It's not only going to record on a USB or a micro SD, but you can also save it on a network drive, which is going to be NAS. And you can also live stream directly from this to YouTube and everything is inside. And I do not want to forget if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the click the subscribe button, make sure you share this with your friends and family make sure you click the notification icon select all in order to get notified once we have any video out on top of that if you have a question drop them at the bottom of the video we love to help you out this app and don't forget to click the click the like button it really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time in here are all the components that are part of the box it comes with a user manual it has everything written in the front remember that it's a lot of pages because it comes with different type of languages. Now, when you go to the first part, which will be English, it will start with table of content. And then once you go to it, it tells you exactly what's involved in this package, which I'm going to cover. On top of that, how you will be able to connect things. So this way you can capture even your VCRs. It has all the information there and all of the parts are included into it. There's also a remote. And once we go inside of it, it has more information and it just goes to a different language. Now, remember that everything is there, but if you need more help, you can go to their website and you will find everything that you need. Now, the next thing we're going to cover will be your power supply. This side will be connecting to the actual unit and this part will be connecting to your electricity. One thing I have to mention that this is 12 volt, one amp, but there are different type of connectors that comes with it. Now, why they have entered these is that if you just want to go around the world or you want to buy it from different place, they do not have to just position one type of connector for it. Like this one is really good for Asia. And then if you want to go towards Europe or you want to go towards United Kingdom and you want to go to even Australia, some parts will be using this type of connector. Now, this is very popular over there. But if you want to go to United States or you want to go to Canada and there are some parts of the world that do use this. This is the one that we really play with. So let's just connect it right now and see exactly how this will be going in. You can see that it does not go one way. You have to flip it in this way. It will be able to process and connect. Now once it's in you want to take it out. There is a little part that you have to press and then it will come out. But you cannot really process it if you not hear that little click. And then once you hear it, it comes out. I know that I'm just going out of frame because I was pushing and bringing a lot of tension to it. So you have to push it down and then bring it out and it just comes out really easily. So this is how you will be able to process. So let's push that in. So this way we're going to use it for our video. Now it does come with a little adapter for your VCR and camcorders. So this way you can capture them too. Yes, this will really going to help you out with everything so you can see your RCA connectors. These are called RCA and that way you can get your voice and audio out of it. So remember that this was just for stereo. This is video as you can see and then your right and left is going to be the red and the white one. And this side is the one that you're going to be connected to your device in order to capture it. Now it does come with an HDMI cable. So this way you do not need to purchase another one. And this will really work to connect this to your gaming system. So this is called an IR sensor. And this is how you will be able to connect and use your remote a little bit further. And this is how it will work. So this will connect to your unit. We will get to it and then this is the one that will detect and pick up the remote to make it work. So yes, this is called an IR blaster. Now it does come with a remote. This is really good to have. Again, let's just open it up. The remote itself looks very similar to any other remotes that you could find these days for Android boxes. But again, this is a little bit different because it's a little bit bulky. 
and the buttons are really clickable. And I have to say that it's not that just when you click one, the other ones you could see it push into because this is designed different. I really like how they designed it and this is how it really looks. So you do have the power button and then you have the source button. You have the menu key, the information, navigation key with the OK in the middle. You also have the time recorder and then you have the back button. You also have the record, the return key for the record. And then you also have a screen capture. You have full media button, which will be play, rewind and fast forward. Also, you can skip a chapter and you can go back a chapter or you can go forward a chapter and then the pause buttons right underneath of it. Now you do have the recall button. You also have the delete button, the stop button, and then three function keys. And then their logos right in the bottom with their remote model number. So this way, if you ever need it to be replaced or you have broken yours, you want to buy another one, this is how you will know what you have. When you look in the back, you have a little part so you can open and you can put two AAA batteries, which is included in the actual package. So this way, you're not going to fall behind. Now comes the big moment, the actual video capture card. Now this is called Easy Recorder 330 and it is done by every media, which they are fabulous when it comes to capturing. Most of my capturing is done by this company. Now, this is the first one that they have sent me. The rest of them I have purchased. Even my capture cart, which I expired. This has been going for a very long time ago that I had it. And this is beautiful how they have managed to put everything together. And you can see the name right over here that what this is. But let's just put it aside and then going with this one. Now, I do have another one that I'm using right now. Here you go. This is how this really looks. I really like the design on the top. It looks like an Android box, but a little bit chubbier and a little bit heavier than the Android boxes that are out there. And this is not an Android box. And let's just take that off. All right. So from the front, you can see there's a power button. You do have a headphone jack right in the front. And then when you go to the one side of it, you have a USB 2.0 and then the micro SD slot. When you go to the back part of it, you have the IR sensor, you have an AVN. So this way, if you have any kind of older type of TV or you have older type of VCR camcorders, you can connect it and you can capture. You do have an HDMI in, which is required and an HDMI out so that we can see it on the screen what you're going to capture. It does have a LAN connection. We will cover that, what that's for. And then you also have the DC connection, which is 12 volt. 1.5 amps if you ever need it. Now on this side, there's nothing here. When you go to the bottom part of it, it has four little legs so it can sit on the table. And if you have any heavy cables, it's not really going to pull it. Again, it's moving a little bit, but it's not moving a lot that you can see, which is really good. So that way it can really stick to your table and it's not going to move. But you can see there's a sticker and most of the information you really require is going to be here. What I really like about this is that it has a LAN connection. Now that is so you can record on your NAS. Yes, and we do have one. So let's see if we can capture some of the stuff and show you exactly how that's going to work. So let's connect it and see what's going to show up around it. All right, so in order to process this, first we're going to connect the power and then for HDMI in, we're going to use one of our Android sticks that we have, which is my Buzz stick. I haven't used this in a long time, so let's see how it's going to work. And on top of that, for video out, we're going to use, which is going to my monitor. So this is where we can check to see exactly what's happening. And then on top of that, we're going to test this part and also the USB on how it's going to capture. So for the meantime, let's capture it with a different capture card to see how the menus look. So on the front, you will get the red light once it turns on. Now, once you hook it up and you press the source button, make sure it is showing HDMI on a top right hand side. And once that is done, so I have connected my Buzz TV VidStick Max. So here you go. This is what I have done. So once you have everything hooked up, you have to press the menu button on your remote and voila, you see this part. Beautiful. Now I have already went through it so I can see more on a top and you're going to get this little menu. What I really like is the little parts. Now remember that you do have some little cautionary things because we didn't connect it to the internet yet. We just want to capture a few things and then we're going to dive in into it and check a few things. Like if it's going to do an update, if it's going to connect to the internet and all that. So let's go first. Here you go. This is how everything looks. So your media studios here. So if you record anything will show up. Now remember that the USB they're going to connect on the side or the micro SD as I'm showing you. 
it's going to work with NTFS format or XFAT. You can see it on the bottom that it says, and then it will perfectly going to record for you. And once that is done, you can just press OK to get out of it. You can also schedule a list, and if you have certain things starting at certain time, and you have captured it on something like live stream starts at this time, you want to record it, go ahead, you can process that too. And very easily you can set that up as you can see right now and voila, it will work. You also have settings. This is the mandatory part to capture is going to be here. So let's go to it. Now, remember that, that I've been playing with this for a little bit and here it goes. So the language, you can always change it to different ones that you wish. The list is very big and yes, it's really cool to have. So as soon as you hook it up, mine was if it was Cantonese or Mandarin, but I just changed it. And on top of that, when you go down, you do have the display mode. I put it on standard. Yes, you can change it to gaming mode. So it takes a little bit more bits and pieces. So this way, if you want to capture a really cool game, you do not really looking for little pixelization. And this is going to fix it for you. And on top of that, you have network. And this is where we're going to set it up. So this way, we're going to be able to set it up as wired and current network information. You can see that. So it's nothing been has been set up yet. We will get to it in a couple of seconds. So this way we can set this up. And once you go to the time and day, that's also not correct yet. We will set that up too. And going down for the disk management, this is going to be your USB or micro SD card slot, which is going to set up on a side. And you have to make sure that's also set up properly. In order to get out of it, you just have to press OK and it will go back. One more thing is AV management. This is where you're going to be able to select your input. Right now we are connected as HDMI. You can click on it and it will tell you different ones if you want to connect as composite. Except that you can go to your audio input. Again, right now everything is through the HDMI. And then once you change it, it will change. And AV pass through is there too, which is really good. So this way your quality will get better because it's 480p from AV, then it will go to the 720p. So you're going to capture it. And then, then color range, you can also set it up to be full or limited. This is all going to be here for you. Now going down, you also have recording and snap. So this is how you will be able to process everything here that if you want to make it to normal or optimal, you can process that too. And once I click, it changes my whole screen for me because it uses the same IR blaster with the other devices that I have connected. So the screen just totally flips. And on top of that, you have the snapshot settings. It says good. You can change it to normal or optimal. So you can change it over here. And this is how easy it is to process. I'm just going to put it on good because it looks better right now. And on top of that, you also have the instant highlights. You can change it to different segments or like minutes and more. You can process it there. And if you are going to stream via YouTube and you want to broadcast it through YouTube, you can go here and you can log in and it will really going to help you out. And on top of that, also the quality is there that you can place it. So you're going to get a higher quality. And this way, people would really love your videos because it's going to be more vibrant. On top of that, if you have a mic hookup and a headset and a front, you can do that too. And also you have the NAS recording. Mine is right now off. You can click on it and then you can set it up. So you have to set up your location for your NAS first and then you can go on the top and enable it, except that it would not allow you to enable. Let me just show you saying enable. There you go. It says that it's not set up, so it will be on disabled. And also the what type of recording you're going to get. So this is H264 is the maximum quality. Again, it's going to be vibrant using that. The IR device. Yes, if you want to have an extension for your IR device because you're a little bit, you are a little bit away more than four feet, you do require that and then you can hook it up and here you go. That's how it's going to be happening. And I already shown you that the part is in the box. And on top of that, you also have the power management. You can go there and you can set it up. So by itself, it will just shut off so that we do not have to use more electricity and more. And this way it's going to really work for you. And the firmware is sitting over here too. So if there is any updates, you can use one of those buttons on the bottom, which is F1 to update it. And that's about it. You can also restore it to factory and product information is there. Just in case if you ever need it, you can go to it and you will learn more about this information. So this is the main menu on how you will be able to process it. 
So when you're connecting your USB to the Easy Recorder itself, the first thing you will see is that it analyzes the USB to make sure that it is compatible and is going to be able to record or not. And then once it's done, you get this little part, press OK. And now we already downloaded a file that we got from the website. And now we're going to update the firmware. So you can see the firmware right now is 1.1.5.2. The latest firmware that we found was 1.1.10. So let's go to it. And then we're going to say F1 because the file is already on that USB that we just connected. And now it's just going to check and make sure that it's on the root of the file itself, on the SD card itself or on the USB itself. And now it's just going to get it and update its files. So remember, most of these updates are made for bug fixes. So it's not something that you have to really pay attention on. Oh my God, this is not going to work. So I do not know if you can go backward on your updates, but this is an update and we're just going to process it without wasting your time. We're just going to follow along. Once it's updated, this is what you're going to see. So press menu and now you can go back into settings into the part that talks about the firmware and here you go. Now you have the latest firmware on this. So this is pretty cool and now let's go through and record some parts and then let's go play with it. This is exactly how good this will really record. So I have this box and I'm already connected to it. You can see that certain things are not loaded because it's not connected to the internet. I haven't played with this that much lately but this is my to go Vidstick, which is done by Bus TV. So let's go through and play with this. So number one is record. So I will press record and you can see the recording started right now. And it's about four seconds going into it. And let's just record a few more seconds into it. Grabbing the remote, I'm just going to maneuver so this way you know that, okay, this is not a freeze or frozen screen. And we are going to play around so you can see that, yes, it does work. And if I have to go to all apps, that we have on it and it's all going through but again I haven't played with it for over a month so <laughs> it's a lot of things are in there and it only recorded three seconds for some reason let's just press OK alright so that recording has been done now let's go through and play with it I know that the menu was stuck there for a couple of seconds because we clicked on the wrong button so in order to go back to it you have to press menu and you're going to see the first part which is called media studio whatever you're going to record is going to show up underneath of it and here you go the two files that we have processed so if you want to play with it it tells you everything that you need to know how much media storage it took and the second one is the one that we did first this one is the second one so you can see that the megabytes are different so if we have to go there it's about a minute of duration to start playing it and here you go so this is how it really looks and I am not touching anything so in order to play with it this is how nice it looks to go next and play with your videos. That means is inside of your box or whatever you're going to connect, even gaming, this is going to work. So the next test that we're going to process will be with a VHS. So let's see how that goes. Now for testing purposes, we will use our Rambo 3 VHS and we're going to take it out. And you can see that we watched a little bit of it not that long ago. And this is an original tape. You can see I broke the side too. But again, let's just test it out to see exactly how it looks. So number one, once you push it in, make sure you press the stop for a few seconds. And this is my to-go VCR. This is the prong that we have to connect. So these are RCA connection. And this is not composite, but when we're selecting it on the menu, we have to select the composite. So let's go ahead and connect it. So now we have to use the extender that came with it. So this way we'll connect to our device. And then we have to match the colors. So now when you look in the back part of it, you do have a section, one is IR and one is AVN. And that's the one we need to connect to, is the AVN. It should automatically detect your VHS and then you should be able to press play and you should see something on the screen. And there you go, as you can see, it already captured everything perfectly for you on the screen. 
So this is really cool on how this is possible for you to play with. So you can see that the menu is really full screen now, which is really cool. And now when we get out and we have to press the record, you can see that the video content protected cannot be recorded, the stream does snap. So this is really cool because it actually tells you that if you are able to record it or not. So that means is you need to have a blocker in order to process it. All the links will be available at the bottom of the video we can order it from. So this was our take. I hope you guys like our video. If you do like it, click the click the like button, subscribe button on the top, comment on the bottom. Always remember to visit our own website, which is xctext.info. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and other social networking places. And thank you.